Tending to all the animals here has been quite a lot of hard work. And I think I'm ready to do something a bit more magical and less manure smelling. First thing I want to do is going back a couple episodes now, I asked you guys to help me name my first diamond pickaxe that we just wanted to save as a little memento. I do have it right here. And then this name came in from somebody that just shows their name is anonymous, but I did like it just due to the purpose of this first pickaxe of ours. And they asked me to name it the fortune teller. And I think that is a 100% appropriate name for this pickaxe that we're going to save. Also, I mentioned that we were going to save our first wooden pickaxe and some of our first like wooden tools and our first like armors and that kind of stuff just to kind of have as like a memento going back into the server when we, you know, kind of look back in the future. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab all these and we're going to take this with us too. And we need somewhere to save these things for a little while. And to do so, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to change some of these spruce planks. We're going to change those into some sticks and probably a decent amount of them because we're going to make some item frames. Item frames are a really good way to label and save things. And I think that's what we're going to do here. And I, I hear a zombie. Hello. I think uh, hopefully we don't get attacked or blown up. I think somewhere like right here would probably be a good location, right? So let's go ahead. Let's put the fortune teller here. Let's go ahead and let's put all of our armor pieces here. Um, we also here we got this and this. Oops. Nope. Give me that. Give me that. Uh, we should probably also put enchant axe here, too. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's put enchant axe here and then let's go ahead and drop in our first axe and our first pickaxe. Now we have a little area to come back and remember the beginning of the guide series. And I got a couple more things with item frames I need to do before we get things kicked off. And one last thing, I got a comment in one of my previous videos from Jay Wyndham 101 that recommended and reminded me that I should label things like these chests right here. That way I know what is what and I don't have to guess. So this one, we'll go ahead and click on. This is to smelt items. This one right here is where our fuel goes. Thanks, Wyndham. I appreciate it. We have things labeled now. And just to let you guys know, I do read all of your comments and I love seeing the tips given in the comment section. Uh, those can really help people out a lot. And also like it's interaction on YouTube as well, which helps out the channel. So be sure that you leave a comment, click the like and subscribe button to contribute to the growth of our channel here. And I'm going to be reading more of your tips out in future episodes. So make sure you leave your best tips every single episode. Now, getting back on topic here, Today, we are going to be working on enchanting. Enchanting, for those of you that don't know much about it, it's probably the most important and impactful thing you can do in your Minecraft world. And really, you should be trying to do this as soon as you can. Now, there are numerous ways to get enchantments. You can find books or enchanted gear and chests. You can go fishing and get enchanted books. Um, you can also kill pillagers, do pillager raids, and get enchanted books as well, uh, which we'll be going over fishing later on, I believe. Sometimes mobs drop enchanted gear and villager trading, which we will do a bit later as well, is the best way to get yourself all of the gear that you ever need. But it's not always easy to do something like that really early in the game. And in my opinion, the easiest way to get enchantments at this stage of the game is by using an enchanting table. Doing this is going to use up a lot of your levels, though. So first, let me show you the easiest way to get a lot of levels on Bedrock Edition. Sorry for my Java peeps. This trick will not work for you, but it's something really cool to see anyways. So I'm going to quickly build up an XP bank for us to use to get easy and quick XP. We will do a more elaborate one of these later on in the season, but today I'm going to keep this one quick and simple. Furnaces on Bedrock and Java Edition, they both give you XP when things run through them, right? So if I run 64 items through this furnace, I'm going to get 64 items worth of XP based on whatever amount of XP that that specific item gives. Different items give different XP values, and we're not going to go over exactly how much that is today. But just know in general, that's how it works. 64 items go through. If I come in here and take one item out, I will get the 64 items worth of XP given to me. Now, in Java edition, what will happen is if I run a 65th item through here and take that item out, I'm only going to get XP for that one item because I already took the 64 items worth of XP out. So it kind of resets it, right? It resets itself. You're starting over on Bedrock edition. It actually is broken. It does not work like that. This is a long standing bug in the game that they have not fixed yet. And it's been like this for a couple years now. If I go through, I take the 64 out, right? 
I get the 64 items worth of experience points, just like normal, like you're supposed to. But if I run a 65th item through here and I take that 65th item out, I don't, it doesn't reset itself on better condition. You get 65 items worth of experience points. So you can keep taking items out and running single items into a chest and you just get more and more and more and more and more experience points every single time that you do it. So we're actually gonna take this little system here, just a single little slice of it, one, one furnace, and we're gonna make that over at our starter base area because that's where we're gonna be doing everything today. Okay, we spent a little time on stream making the furnace XP system, and I'm just gonna show you it really quick so that way you can see that I did it. <laughs> um, we have at the top, we have a hopper, with a whole bunch of potatoes up here going down into the smoker, which has a battery on the front. You can see the battery. That means it's working, right? Um, the items go into the smoker. They get smelted down by this coal and they turn into baked potatoes. And as of right now, those items are just going down through the system here. They're going down a hopper, going down a hopper and ending up in here. I'm going to let this keep going until it just fills up this chest. And I'll probably just leave it down there in full just to make life easy. But let's say I would like to get some baked potatoes out of here to get levels. Cause you guys see, I have one level right now, right? What I can do is I can hit this switch right here. I can take this baked potato out. That gave me 14 levels. If I wait again, you see, I just gained another five levels just from doing that right there, right? So I'm gonna keep getting the full amount of XP every single time I take just one item out of here. So that's how this system works. Just like I kind of explained before, you got to see it in action a little bit right there and it's all done and it looks really cool. But now this is where we're going to be working. We're going to be putting an enchanting setup in here. And to do that, we're actually going to need to make an enchanting table. And one of the ingredients we need for this enchanting table is four pieces of obsidian, which we have some down here in the bottom of the world. But if for some reason we didn't, I think you guys maybe saw this in an earlier episode. If we just put down some water and let it flow into lava, it'll turn it into obsidian. In our case though, we kind of already have it here. So we're gonna safely mine out this obsidian just in case there's lava underneath here. We don't wanna die. We're gonna place a water bucket right here. And with our diamond pickaxe, we're gonna mine up this obsidian so we actually get it. We're gonna grab ourselves four pieces right here. And as you can see, we lucked out. We did not have any type of lava underneath it, but it is possible to find that. So doing this water bucket method is absolutely recommended. So you make sure you don't die by lava. And we're also going to need a couple of diamonds. So we'll bring those with us too. And actually I'm gonna end up needing probably all the diamonds at some point anyways, we'll grab those. We'll also grab us a whole bunch of lapis blocks. I don't think there's anything else I need from in here. No? Okay, so now we have our materials, I think. Do I have, nope, I need to make a book. I need a book. To make a book we need, oh. I just turned the X. Okay, we have our materials together that we need. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna come in here and we're going to make our enchanting table. We do need a book with it as well. And I have enough for lots of books, right? So we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna actually, oh, we're gonna need a lot of bookshelves too. So let's just make all the books. We'll use all of our leather, and all of our wood that we have to make all the books. And then we will go in here. We will make our enchanting table. And we will also make our bookshelves. We need 15 bookshelves to be exact. So we'll go through, we'll make 15 bookshelves. Now I will probably adjust this layout at some point in the near future, just to make it look better for the room. But what you need to know is you need an enchanting table in the middle. They're going to take bookshelves. You have to have a space all the way around. You cannot have anything directly by the enchanting table, not even a carpet. If you do, it's not going to work. And you need to do 15 of these. And this is the most common way of doing it. 15 around it, just like this. And this makes this enchanting table a maximum level enchanting table, a level three table. Um, the level of the enchanting table is simply dependent on how many bookshelves you have around it. And for most cases, really all cases, you're going to want to have the full 15. Now comes the fun part of starting to do some enchanting. And I need to get a couple of additional tools in here as well. Okay. And the additional tools we need to add in here. One is going to be a grindstone. Grindstone is going to be a really important tool for us to use in here because it's going to allow us to take items or enchantments off of items. And that may sound a little crazy at first, but you'll see why here in just a few moments. I need a good place to put this. It'll look cool. We, oh, nope, that's a slab. Or, nope, that's not a slab. <laughs> that's awesome. That looks really cool. And we'll go ahead and we'll throw in our anvil right there too. We're gonna need to make another one of those here pretty soon. Now to enchant, 
we're gonna need items to enchant, which is why I got all my diamonds and I got our lapis. Um, I'm gonna go get some iron to make some anvils. And then we have our grindstone behind us. So we can go through like all of the enchantments that we don't want. And we can take it off of gear to cycle the enchanting table. And I'm gonna go through that process here with you in just a few moments. Um, also, uh, we're going to go through, I'm going to go through each of my pieces of gear and I'm going to get all of the exact items set up that I want to have fully enchanted gear. And as I go through this process, I'll show you the beginning process of cycling the enchanting table and I'll go over each enchantment I decide to stick with. That way, you know what I think is best for your starter gear. So let's start enchanting. Okay, so here's ultimately how we're gonna start. And this is the process I'm gonna follow the whole time. So I'm gonna show you once, and then every time I find an enchantment that I want, I'll break in just to tell you about that enchantment and why I'm picking it for my gear. So we're gonna walk up to the table here, and we're actually gonna individually check everything that we put through. Actually, I need to get, I need to make another pickaxe. We don't have a lot of wood on us and we need sticks. So I'm gonna have to change that. Well, let me go ahead, let me just make, um, let me make some sticks really quick. And do I have the, di did I take the diamonds? I did not. Let's grab a stack of diamonds on us. Let's have an extra pickaxe on us because we're gonna actually end up doing some combining of tools. And we'll go over that here in just a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pop in whatever we wanna like really start working on first, right? And usually that's gonna be your pickaxe. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a pickaxe in. Ah, so the level three enchantment, which is this one right here, gives us unbreaking three. The level two enchantment gives us efficiency two. Level one enchantment gives us efficiency two. We're not going to worry about those right now. So we're going to want to take unbreaking three because unbreaking three, which is the highest level of unbreaking, makes it so it's a lot less likely for our tools to break. We need more levels, though. You see when I pop this back in here, you see this says 30. That's the number of levels that you need. And then you see that it will take three lapis lazuli and three enchantment levels or three levels from you when you do it. And this is completely out of uh, fuel. And now that we have our 30 plus levels, we could go ahead and we click here, add and breaking three and look what it did. It added on extra enchantments here for us. Sometimes you'll get a roll where it adds extra enchantments in when you click that level 30 enchant. Sometimes they're going to be pretty good enchantments and sometimes they're not like this one. We got a breaking three. Yes, but we only got fortune two and we only got efficiency three. Well, fortune three we can get from our villager over there. So we know we can do better than that. And efficiency three is not really very good. The enchanting table could actually get you as high as efficiency four. So I'm actually going to take this. I'm going to put it into the grindstone and I'm going to take the enchantment off because I want to get more than just unbreaking as the useful enchantment that we have on our enchanting or on our pickaxe, because I don't want to have to combine a whole lot of different pickaxes just to get what we are looking for. And also I mentioned cycling enchantments. This is what encycling enchantments is. Fortune two is worthless to me because I have the fortune three um, book that I can buy and we don't want fortune two, we want fortune three. So what I'm gonna do instead of buying this one is I can either do one of two things. I can either cycle the enchantment, which would be me clicking the one right here to, to get all new enchants to show up here and just coming over here to the grindstone and taking the fortune enchantment off of here, or the efficiency, whatever it was, um, off the efficiency one, or I can switch to a new piece of equipment to check and see if I want it, right? The tools will always show up all the same. So like if I look at this ax here, um, oh, nope, it is a little bit different. Axes are different. The shovel should be the same. Yeah, shovel's the same. So what I'll do is I'll check my sword. That one's got looting two. Um, looting two is, or looting gives us extra drops from mobs that we fight. Looting two isn't what we want. We want looting three. So we're not going to put that on. Let's check our chest piece. Protection three. Protection makes it so mobs attack you a lot less. So we're not going to go with protection three. That's not the highest. We want protection four. Let's check our helmet. Projectile protection four. Does the same thing as protection, except it protects you more from projectiles like uh, arrows and that sort of thing. That's not good. We don't really care about that one. Boots are protection three. Pants are protection three. So there's nothing on this table that we want. So let's go ahead. Let's throw our pick back on. Let's throw a lapis in here and let's cycle it. So now the enchanting table's been reset. I'm going to take this. I'm going to throw it in here. And now we get to check them all again. So throw this back on. Unbreaking three. Might be good, right? Let's throw in three lapis. Let's click it. Ah, that's exactly what we were looking for. Unbreaking three, efficiency four. Now we're gonna bring another pickaxe over. We're gonna throw it in. 
We have Unbreaking 3 again. Well, we already have Unbreaking 3. So what we, what we want to do is we want to see other enchantments here that we need, not Unbreaking. Let's get ourselves levels. Let's check our other gear. Sword has Smite. We're not worried about that one now. Unbreaking. Uh, we do need Unbreaking on a shovel. So let's throw this in. Let's grab it. Ah, look, Unbreaking 3, Fortune 2, Efficiency 4. Since Fortune's not really important on a shovel, we're going to keep this and we're going to see if we can find another Efficiency 4 shovel because Efficiency is how fast you mine items or break, like break blocks, essentially. Efficiency 4 is pretty fast. It's the highest you can get from the enchanting table, but we want Efficiency 5. So we're going to try to get another shovel with Efficiency 4 on it and then we'll combine them together in here to get efficiency five and here it is so we can go ahead we can click this to get efficiency four on our shovel that's the only enchantment we got but i'm okay with that we're going to come over to our anvil we're going to throw in this first shovel which is on breaking three fortune two efficiency four the second shovel which is efficiency four and now we have unbreaking three fortune two efficiency five that's a good shovel we're going to take it i'm going to repeat this process until i get everything for all the armor the weapons and the tools that I want. And then I will show you my gear, tell you what each enchantment is and why I wanted it. And Armorless Prowl is back, but I am armorless because we have actually finished doing all of our enchantments. So I thought it would be easiest Instead of me, like I mentioned I was going to do earlier, going through and talking about the updates as they came up, I thought maybe that's a little confusing because then you got to wonder like, well, which which ones do I put on like which things, right? So let's actually talk about them in a more organized fashion and let's look at all of my tools and armor and weapons and you can see what it is you should be putting on what because the gear that I have here, I would consider maxed out end game gear this isn't going to go over every single enchantment that there is like in the whole game but it will go over every enchantment that's going to matter to you and your like regular normal survival play and we'll probably touch on other ones as we go throughout the game and the season and we're going to start with our tools here because for the most part they're all the same so in the bottom row here i have tools uh pickaxe shovel and hoe that all have silk touch unbreaking three and efficiency five now unbreaking three that just simply makes it so it takes your tools a lot longer time to actually break the durability is going to last a lot longer meaning you can keep using it for mining breaking blocks and that sort of thing and it's going to be longer before you have to replace or heal up or repair this tool efficiency five just simply makes you mine a lot faster so instead of having to take a really long time to mine blocks like you can see here it, it breaks almost instantly. It's not insta mining, and that's a term we'll actually go over later, but it, it can be pretty close. Also, you notice that when I broke that block, I actually got stone. It didn't turn into cobblestone. That's because we have silk touch. Silk touch is going to give you the block in its original form for blocks that don't normally do that. So things like grass blocks, things like stone, or things that get destroyed when you break them like an ender chest, which we'll go over ender chest later as well. Silk touch is gonna to be important for all of those things. Now, uh, we have that on our pickaxe, our shovel, and our hoe. And for our pickaxe, shovel, and hoe, we also have another version that instead of having silk touch has fortune three. That way, if we need to get ores, we have this to give us fortune. Um, this one, my shovel only has fortune too, because fortune is not really that important for a shovel. It does get you more flint when you mine up gravel. So if you need flint for any reason, it is good to have fortune three. We're not at that stage yet. So that's why I didn't worry about upgrading it all the way. And then the hoe fortune three is going to be great for breaking leaves and getting saplings. If you want to get a lot of saplings or apples or something really quick, you want to use your fortune three hoe for that. Then there's your ax. Same thing. We're not really going to, we don't really care about fortune or uh, silk touch on it because for the most part the hoe is going to like the other tools are going to do the same thing the axe doesn't really do many or any of them cheaper uh, maybe like mushroom blocks i think it's about the only thing i can think of and we don't need those quite yet um, but i do have smite five on my axe making it a complete beast when it comes to killing undead mobs things like skeletons uh zombies and you know that sort of thing mobs that are mobs that are in the undead category 
Next, we have our weapons. I do have my sword here, which has Unbreaking 3 we've talked about already. Uh, we have Looting 3, which is kind of like Fortune, but for mobs. You get more drops from mobs when you kill them. Great for if you need to get gunpowder from creepers, string from spiders, bones from skeletons, whatever it may be. Any mob that you kill outside of, I think, like the Iron Golems is the only thing that it doesn't really work on. You're going to get more of that particular item from that mob. Uh, you have sharpness five, which simply just makes the sword hit stronger. Five is the maximum value you can get for sharpness. And all of these ones I'm talking about, these are all the maximum values you can get. There's not a value higher unless I tell you that there's one that's higher. OK, uh, you got fire aspect, too, which simply catches the mob on fire and makes them continue to die. That way it helps you be able to one shot a mob, like hit it and run away and it'll die on its own. Um, and knockback to simply knocks the mob back a far ways. That way it kind of gets it off of you. Good for creepers. Like if you want to make sure they don't blow up on you, go and hit them, go and hit the creeper. It'll get knocked back and it'll stop its exploding animation. Then you have the bow. We have unbreaking three on here too. We have flame, which does the same thing as fire aspect. It just catches the mob on fire when you shoot it. You have power five, which is going to make the bow hit a lot harder. And you have punch two, which is going to knock the mob back just like knockback did on the other one. Um, we have infinity on here as well. I'll, I'll explain to you my relationship with infinity here in a moment, but we do have infinity on here. Um, infinity just makes it so you don't run out of arrows. So you can sit here and you can shoot all day and you don't run out of any arrows. So me, me and infinity, we, we have this love hate relationship, meaning I love to hate it. But this is the time that even to somebody like me who, who likes to hate on infinity, and I got to let you guys know, because there's a lot of people that are new to the channel. This is all in good fun. OK, you're going to see me hate on Infinity a lot. Don't get upset about it. I, I know how good of an enchantment you all feel like it is. And I'm not I'm not going to bash you too much, although I probably will bash you a whole lot. But Infinity, even for somebody like me, is acceptable when you're at a point in the game where you don't even have mending yet. And once we get mending and we add it onto our stuff and we talk about it, which we're not going to really talk about it yet. We'll talk about why I think mending is better for a bow. But for now, since we don't have it, we'll use infinity until that time comes. And finally, we have all of our pieces of armor. So starting with the two simple ones, you have a chest plate and leggings. Um, the chest plate has protection for which makes it so generally speaking, everything damages you less. Uh, we have our leggings, which also ended up getting thorns two on it. Anytime you get attacked, the thing that attacks you gets hurt a little bit. I'm not the biggest fan of thorns, so I don't worry about getting it on everything. But if it's there, you know, whatever, what can I do? Right. Um, and then on our leggings, we have fire protection. It does kind of what regular protection does, but it does it just for fire. So meaning fire and lava, fire and lava will hurt you a lot less if you have fire protection on. So that's good. We want that. We have fire protection and we have regular protection. Our helmet has fire protection for as well. So now we have two fire protections. They do stack on top of each other. And I'm going to show you in a moment here how effective that is. I can jump in lava. Don't got to worry about it. It's not really going to hurt me that much. I have plenty of time to get out of it. Uh, we have respiration three, which makes it so you can breathe underwater a lot longer than you normally would be able to. I don't know the exact percentage. Maybe I'll throw it on screen right now if I look it up after while I'm editing the video, but it's a lot longer. Aqua affinity. Um, makes it so you mine blocks underwater at the same speed that you mine them above ground. So that's obviously really great. And then if we go down to our boots, we have protection four on them. So you see, I got protection four on two pieces of armor, fire protection on two pieces of armor. Uh, feather falling four means we take significantly less fall damage if we fall from higher up places. Um, you got to be careful, though. You're not immune to fall damage. You just take a lot less of it. You have depth strider three, which makes it so you swim through water a lot faster. You actually can walk through water at the speed that you can walk on land. So super important to have super nice to have as well. But I said we would walk through fire. So let's walk through fire. OK, told you all I would take a lava bath and a lava bath is what I'm going to take. Word of advice, though, little tip here, pro tip. Don't jump down into lava like you do in water like this. Because lava does not stop fall damage like water does. And you, you might not die from the lava, but you'll die from the fall damage. Also, you should know items that fall into lava, like this trap door, they, they burn and they, they disappear. They're gone forever. So make sure that you do die. You get far away from lava if you're about to die. If you're on fire, run away from the lava because, yeah, you don't want your stuff to get destroyed in there. But as you can see, I can sit here. I can swim in the lava. 
and it's taking me a long time to take damage and die. Actually, I was regenerating health from my food bar faster than I was taking damage from the lava. If you have a third piece of fire protection gear on, then it's it's practically not gonna damage you at all. So fire protection gear is super important to have, especially later on when we go into the nether, because we won't have to worry as much about if we fall into this stuff that we're gonna die, because we have a ton of time to get ourselves out of it if we need to. Um, even to the point of, if you ever find yourself falling in lava somewhere, out in the caves, whatever, put down some blocks like this, Get yourself on top. Now you're good. Now you don't have to worry about the lava killing you. Um, but I don't want that that ugly uh, cobblestone there. So we're just going to break it. That will fill itself in. And we're all good. And I've added in a little bit of lighting in here just to satisfy my RTX mode needs. And I think everything looks good. We got a glow berry hanging up, which I almost punched off. That one is growing and it will eventually grow. We got some lanterns hanging down. Everything in here looks good. It is spawn proof in here as well. So we don't have to worry about any mob spawning. And as you can see, I did shift around my table here. I do still have 15 bookshelves in the area. These ones back here were extra ones I add in. This uh, added in this third row up top doesn't get counted towards the 15. Uh, neither of these ones in the back, but I do have 15 it within the area surrounding the uh, enchanting table here. So as far as this episode is concerned, we are all done. I hope everybody took away a lot from this one. If you did, make sure you click that like button to the video and subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn those notifications on. That way, you know, every time a Bedrock Guide episode comes out. Also, make sure you join me on live streams because we did most of the building of this room, really all of the building of this room on live stream. And you can also check out those videos after the fact in the live stream in the live stream playlist too. So again, click that subscribe button. Let's see how many subscribes this video can get us. Hopefully it's a lot. That would make me happy. And I'll see you next time. Bye.